رمضان اهلا اهلا رمضان صومك سهلا رمضان افضل شهرا رمضان يا رمضان يا ربي لي احمد ارزقكم الجنه عبدا وقف بالباب يدعوك فقبلنا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبيه المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Our beloved brothers and sisters Welcome to another edition of Islam the Natural Way A special series of Ramadan radio programs prepared and produced by the Ghani Islamic Trust In today's program, Dr. Levi Percival will share with us important guidelines on fasting and our health But first Here is a recitation by Hafiz Muhammad Yahya. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum Kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum Washkuru وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Oh, you will believe eight of the good things that we have provided for you and be grateful to Allah if it is Him you wash it. He has only forbidden you dead meat and blood and the flesh of swine and that on which any other name has been invoked besides that of Allah. But if one is forced by necessity without willful disobedience nor transgressing due limit, then is guiltless, for Allah is of forgiving <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, the main objective of fasting in the month of Ramadan is to achieve taqwa, and we should never lose sight of this. As Muslims, we believe with strong conviction that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us is good for us and is what is best for us in this life and the hereafter. Applying this understanding to the month of Ramadan, there are, in addition to the many rewards and blessings in store for the fasting person in the hereafter, numerous benefits in this life for that individual as well. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His infinite wisdom, knows and has prescribed what is best for His best creation. It is my hope, inshallah, to touch on a few of the health benefits of the month of Ramadan when it is done in accordance to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Respected brothers and sisters, as a reminder, we are made up of body and the soul, and in achieving overall wellness, there must be proportion attention to both aspects. Ramadan provides an opportunity to nurture both. As it relates to the physical body, Good health is defined as a balanced interaction between three main components, a biological or physical component, a psychological component, and a social component. Please note, my dear brothers and sisters, in order to achieve the health benefits of the glorious month of Ramadan, 
in all of these components, one must approach it as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companion عنهم, did, by extending the fast to the limbs and even further to the heart. Some of the biological or physical benefits of the month of Ramadan include, but are not limited to, weight loss. As our bodies burn fat to provide the energy it needs during the fasting hours. Blood sugar control in patients with type 2 diabetes. As it is scientifically proven to increase the body's sensitivity to insulin that counters the root cause of type 2 diabetes, which is insulin resistance. Insulin being the hormone that permits food in the form of glucose to enter our cells and also activates the body's storage processes, where excess or underutilized glucose is converted into glycogen and fat. Fasting also improves liver function, which ties closely to the two previous benefits. It also aids in the control of high blood pressure and cholesterol. All of the previous mentioned benefits are major factors in the development of heart disease. So as fasting improves the condition of these factors, so decreases the risk for heart disease. Fasting acts as a form of detoxification, eliminating from our bodies what are known as free radicals which have been linked to cancer-forming cells. Our immune system also benefits greatly from fasting, as 70% of our immune system lies within our digestive tract. While fasting, our digestive system is at rest, and our immune system is afforded the opportunity to regroup and focus more of itself in other systems where there may be a need. Moving on to some of the benefits of Ramadan on the psychological component of health, it must be established, my dear brothers and sisters, that this component refers to one's mental well-being and is associated to conditions such as excess stress, depression, anxiety, addictions, and suicidal ideation, just to name a few. Benefits in this aspect start from the moment we begin our preparation for the month of Ramadan. We know that the Sahaba would supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months to allow them to reach Ramadan. Then they would supplicate to him another six months to accept it from them. This gives us a goal or objective which, from a mental health perspective, gives us clearer focus, direction, motivation all of which counters the main problems of depression. When the month of Ramadan is observed in the manner that the Prophet ﷺ would have done in observance of its etiquettes, we cultivate patience, forbearance, and perseverance, all of which ties into self-restraint, which is an important aspect of anger management. An interesting fact related to anger management is that the part of the brain, the hypothalamus, which plays an important role in regulation of hunger, thirst, and sexual behaviors, also controls aggression. So as the fasting persons train themselves to control their response to these basal instincts, they're also, by anatomical connection, training their response to aggression. Aggression being the driving force behind the vehicle of domestic and other forms of violence in our society. Performance of Salah and the recitation of Quran have also been documented to reduce anxiety and stress, alleviating the internal turmoil associated with both these entities. How fitting is the ayah, verily in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest. The benefits of Ramadan on the social aspect of health. It must be acknowledged that humans by nature are social beings. Islam gives this important by having many acts of worship done in congregation, Ramadan being no exception. We start and end the fast together. There's extra congregational prayers, each celebration, to name a few, all of which bring individuals together at the building block level of family and by extension, the community. 
with a healthy social circle, all of the other components of health, namely biological and psychological, have the best oppor opportunity to thrive. Now to move on to some recommendations. Please be reminded, my dear brothers and sisters, that in order to really achieve the health benefits of the month of Ramadan, one must do so as our beloved Prophet Sallallahu did. With respect to the suhoor and iftar, let us try our best to focus on quality over quantity. As it relates to quality, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 168, O mankind, eat of that which is lawful and tayyib on earth, with the word tayyib referring to that which is good or of good quality. As it relates to quantity, the Prophet وسلم, has been reported to have said that nothing is worse than a person who fills his stomach. So my dear brothers and sisters, be mindful of extravagance and follow the rule of one-third. That is, one-third food, one-third drink, and one-third for breath or air. Eat and drink slowly. Eating too fast after more than 12 hours of fasting causes burned stomach, diarrhea, vomiting. As food is not chewed properly, placing the entire digestive system under strain. Drinking too fast may cause sudden onset of dizziness due to acute mineral imbalance. Use dates. It is well known that the Prophet وسلم, used dates to begin and to end the day's fast. It is, a complete, it is a complete meal in itself, providing a good balance of energy, vitamins and minerals, antioxidant and dietary fiber, while being gentle on the stomach. There is definitely much more to be said regarding the health benefits of the month of Ramadan, but it's my hope, inshallah, that what has been said thus far is of benefit, and it opens the conversation of Islam with health in focus. With this, I would like to leave with you, my dear brothers and sisters, this deduction from the following ahadith. The best thing after sincere faith is well-being. Abu Bakr reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, You will not be given anything after the word of sincere faith like wellness. So ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for wellness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are listening to a presentation by Dr. Levi Percival. Da'wah, Propagation of Islam, Taking the Message to All Guyana. Islam Awareness Week 2019. We have once again witnessed another buzzing period of activities for IAW held from March 1 to 10 under the theme Islam, Divine Guidance for Peace, Love, and Harmony and featured the dynamic presentations by our visiting Shuyuk, Sheikh Mohammed Yaffa of Canada and Sheikh Daoud Abdul Haq of the USA. GIT Perspectives, our weekly television magazine program, continues to be a great source of enlightenment and inspiration for the Muslim and wider community. In addition to our ongoing da'wah outreaches, Initiatives are taken to adequately respond to the educational and the social needs of our new Muslims. Your support is critical to this dynamic effort. Today's program came to you with the kind compliments of Tan and Sons Tire and Auto Spears, dealers in all car parts and accessories, located at Lot 3 Public Road, Bagatstong, East Bank, Demeraro. Call telephone 233-5954 and A.M. Can and Sons Hardware and Electrical Supplies, 10 Kursain Park, LBI, East Coast, Demerara. Dealers in electrical accessories, cables, lighting fixtures, PVC pipes and fittings, paint supplies, cement, concrete hollow blocks, spindles, and general hardware supplies. Call telephone 220-3067 or 220-1702. Do join us again tomorrow for more Ramadan radio presentations right here on Islam the Natural Way. Until tomorrow, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you all. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us how important it is not to react and retaliate to someone who's abused us in any way, in a way that would create a bigger problem. When you're fasting, you should go out of your way to say, I'm fasting. You've sworn me, but I'm fasting. I'm not going to swear back and I'm going to train myself to become a better person even while I'm not fasting. Amazing which means even during the days I'm not going to be fasting later on, I will still be of this high level of morality, high values and so on. So my brothers and sisters, immediately after the verses of fasting, and I've spoken to you very briefly about how we can attain contentment through fasting. Immediately after that, the Almighty makes mention of something very, very powerful. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ When my worshippers ask you about me, ask you meaning Muhammad sallallahu about me, tell them I'm very near. I'm very near. I respond to the call of those who are calling out to me, asking me. So ask me and I will respond. Imagine the Almighty is telling us how important it is to call out to Him for our needs. When you have a need, you first call out to the Almighty. You ask the Almighty. You make sure that you call out to Him alone and you make sure that you are content just by the call. Why content? He may give you what you want and if he knows it's not good for you, you are so convinced and you have so much in terms of belief in the Almighty that you will know he didn't give it to me because perhaps it wasn't the right time, perhaps it wasn't the right thing, perhaps it wasn't good for me at all. So we called out, we received the reward by calling out and you know what, when we called out, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has heard that particular dua and supplication. And so we were satisfied. In Ramadan and outside Ramadan, we call out to Allah. In Ramadan, call out to Allah more. Imagine Allah creates needs within us so that we can develop a relationship with Him. If we didn't have those needs, would we be calling out to Allah? Many people whose lives seem to be flowing and smooth, they don't even call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, they don't even fulfill their own obligations unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, they lose contentment. They lose that happiness. You cannot achieve happiness if you don't have a link with the one who's made you. It might be a temporary feeling of joy. It might be a temporary happiness, but it's not a deep rooted contentment within the heart. And this is why the Almighty tells us about calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just after having spoken about the month of Ramadan and the fasting of Ramadan. Do you know the term Shahru Ramadan is actually mentioned in verse number 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lin-nasi wa bayinatim min al-huda wal-furqan. Allah says, it is the month of Ramadan, Shahru Ramadan, the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. I pause for a moment, give importance to the Quran in this month. It is also known as the month of the Quran. The reason why it's known as the month of the Quran is the Quran was revealed in this month. So there is a greater reward to give importance to the Quran during this month. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to pick up the Quran on a daily basis during the month of Ramadan. Read a page or two at least, a little bit more perhaps, read the meanings of it, try and understand it, put it into practice, and try to convey that message to others, you will definitely achieve contentment. If you want happiness, you cannot afford to divorce yourself from the recitation of the Quran and the connection with the Quran, even through its understanding and much more. <laughs> Thank you.